Anjal Mehta on stage. Anjal sir, now is the time to show up. <laughs> Thank you. So, as you can see your colleague Ankur is on the other side. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Anjal. Uh, long time we haven't met. <laughs> yes. Yeah, since last night. Since last night. <laughs> It's the release week. Uh, you know, this is a project that has been with you since I think 2019. Yeah. Which is a long time for one movie to simmer. What are your current feelings? You know, it's basically, I'm asking you how you feel. Tell me, you tell me. You know, it's, it's a very, it's like, you know, delivering one of your most beloved babies. Because you spent so much time uh, trying to make uh, this film happen. Once the film, actually when Anubhav decided to produce the film, uh, we, uh, we had lockdowns, continuous lockdowns. Can you switch off your mobile? Yeah. We had continuous lockdowns and we had to shoot within a bubble. So there was a struggle shooting the film. Then there was, uh, you know, after the lockdown there was, there was litigation. So lockdown, litigation, and ultimately, I mean, we have uh, managed with a lot of perseverance, with a lot of love, uh, we are bringing a film to you. Uh, and with a lot of pride, we are releasing the film on the 3rd of Feb. Uh, and yeah, and it's, I'm always, I like, always I'm nervous, uh, but also happy and relieved that finally the film will be seen by the world. So before we bring in the boys, I wanted to ask post scan there is this burden of expectations that people have projected on you. Do you yourself sometimes feel that you know, that have to deliver something as you know uh, impactful as that? Do you do you think about that a lot? No, I don't. If you do that, I mean, moment you start letting uh, those expectations weigh you down, uh, you end up uh, only uh, you know doing lesser work than you did in the past. For me, it's always a fresh uh, start. A lot of young filmmakers ask me, you know, where does your energy come from? It comes from, you know, letting go of what I've done in the past. So, you know, that I don't have an archive of any of my old films. I have no copies of my old films. I don't watch my old films. And I dwell upon them only when, for the learnings that I get from them. But it's like a new beginning. Everything, every day is like a new beginning. February 3 will be a new beginning, you know. Uh, we'll be embarking on something else and uh, uh, we'll start afresh, go to the editing studio, look at the edits of my show and, uh, you know, life just goes on. Would you like to bring in Zahan and Aditya? Yeah, I want to uh, introduce two really special boys, uh, Aditya Rawal and Zahan Kapoor to all of you. Uh, both these boys are Nepo kids. <laughs> so, yeah. But, you know, <laughs> uh, well, uh, but unfortunately, it's not the kind of launch that a Nepo kid uh, uh, normally gets. You know, so there's a Kapoor, there's a Kapoor boy, uh, Zahan Kapoor, who uh, is being launched as a uh, very unlikely hero. He does not have a heroic entry. He's being launched as a boy who discovers his courage through an ordeal of one night. He's a boy who discovers the strength that is within him, the strength of humanity that he discovers through the process of the film. And uh, what is commendable is that Zahan uh, chose to do this film as his first film you know, when there are opportunities around you uh, where you can get launched as a conventional uh, hero uh, and he wanted to make this beginning wanted to explore his life as an actor and uh, you know for that alone he needs to be applauded you know, it's a choice it's a tough choice to make and uh, it's a wonderful choice to make uh, and uh, I have Aditya Rawal, who you've seen uh, once or twice. I hope you've seen less of him because this film will show you what he's capable of. He's capable of killing people. He's 
there's something really terrible looking in that smiling face. And uh, I've got the worst out of him <laughs> in this film. So, yeah, but I mean, these two boys are talented. Uh, they are a generation of actors, you know, who we believe are, you know, that this generation. So, this film is like an exploration of this generation. And uh, through them, I've explored this generation. You know, you always believe that these young people are on their on social media all the time. They are distracted. They have an attention deficit. Uh, but in them, I discovered a spirit that we uh, often ignore. And that spirit is what they have portrayed uh, through their work in this film. So yeah, I give you Zahan Kapoor and Aditya Rao. Round of applause for these two very promising comments. Yesterday I was talking to uh, Rajkumar Rao who'd come to see the film and one of the things that he pointed out about Faraz is that it completes your Muslim trilogy, so to speak, you know, Shahid, Omerta and Faraz. Uh, also, if one like sort of probes and looks at patterns in your work, you can see there is a pro preoccupation with young Muslim men who are persecuted, you know, including by the shot that you did in Modern Love. So, I'm sure that's not by design that you change these subjects, but subliminally they come and they are a reflection of your thoughts. Uh, how does that process work? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, uh, you know, I always say that you don't, uh, you don't find stories, stories find you. And that's what happens. You know, you sort of oscillate towards a story that reflects your concerns about the time that you're living in, about the world that you inhabit. And uh, I think Faraz is part of that exploration. You know, Shahid began as an exploration of the othering, the others, and uh, the othering of communities. You know, so when you say Muslim, you know, for me, Muslim is replaceable. You know, anybody who's othered, you know, and we, we, uh, we often skirt these questions, we often ignore these questions, we often take a back seat on these questions. Uh, we are passive about facing those questions. Can can we just have silence there, please? Pichai? Call him, Pichai, please, sorry. Silent, please. Very distracting. Yeah, so we, we often, uh, you know, let those... Uh, so, these are just films about difficult conversations of our times. You know, and so Faraz is a step in that direction, you know, so when with Shahid we started a conversation about the othering and about a young man who within that, a system that is loaded against him, finds uh, a quest for truth, finds his nobility, who discovers his nobility. In Omerta, we sort of explored the completely opposite side of the axis. In Faraz, we are taking head on this conversation of this good versus bad, you know, and using religion to justify the bad. So it is tackling that head on. I think uh, the trilogy, you know, these concerns will not be completed in a trilogy. I think this is a ongoing process. It's an ongoing process, you know. So if you look at this poster, Article 15, Shahid, uh, you know, that it's very telling. So Article 15 can be seen as a part of the same series, you know. There's a story about the othering <coughs> of caste, caste, religion, until we put people in boxes and we, you know, continue this good versus bad based on people's uh, religious or social identity, uh, we will continue uh, uh, this kind of, uh, you know, discriminatory, discriminatory and binary debate. Zahan, I wanted to ask you, like, uh, once I joked about being an advocate, usually, I mean, it's not misplaced. Usually the idea is that, you know, if somebody from a star's family is getting launched, it's a typical, conventional, heroic debut. Uh, you've consciously, and it could have been fairly possible for you to go that route, but you chose this, you know, like a relatively independent film, which, you know, focuses more on the story, not the stardom. A uh, little a bit about the, those choices. Um, first of all, like, I'm 
completely aware and very very fortunate to be given that opportunity by a filmmaker like Hansa sir. He saw me hanging around Prithvi and he felt something fit in his mind. At the time I was trying to seek out opportunities myself. I wanted to go through the route of theatre. Aditya and I both have a, a very strong connect to live performance and we've grown through that medium and discovered our love for the craft from there. And from my perspective, it was always, I mean, these were very nice things and it's very nice to be in a situation where people can say that you have access. But from me, it was very clear that I wanted to be a part of stories. I wanted to be a storyteller. I wanted to do anything I could to learn and to be in the right position to be able to grow. Hansa sir offered an opportunity of, like he said, it is a part of his process of discovering stories, discovering a character, understanding what makes them tick, uh, a flawed sense of humanity, of how people just struggle with these questions, with their lives, and I think all of his movies somehow always find that rust. And it was something that instantly felt like this is not a calculation. This is, an gen this is a genuine attempt to communicate to an audience something very profound, something very soulful, something very current and urgent. And to be a part of that, I think, is the most beautiful thing. So, genuinely just want to be here to serve the story. It is an incredible story. It is a very powerful story. Um, and it's, it is our great fortune that we are allowed to try and give that story some sense of life, some sense of voice. So, it's an opportunity that we have been given and, and uh, I hope that we have managed to at least put our energy forward and, and do it some sense of justice. So, it's not about making choices as much of it as it is about hopefully just leading from the heart. Um, right. Right. Yeah. It's very well said. Aditya, I wanted to ask the part that you play of, of Nibras, you know, it is, it's, it's a dark road, it's somebody who's completely sort of, you know, convinced about the ideology that he's standing for. But what makes it stand apart is that he also feels very human. You know, there are a bunch of contradictions in that character and, and the way you play it. How was this journey to sort of humanize a part that is so clearly, you know, demonic? So, uh, to begin with, I think, uh, the it was in the script. It was in Sir's brief as well, you know, the idea that these are not your uh, run-of-the-mill Khunkhar terrorists that you watch in, um, in cinema very often. They are human beings. They are, in many ways, lost boys. You know, uh, Sir mentioned the point about religion. Uh, religion can lead to a lot of good, but it can also lead to a lot of bad because it's about how you react to it as an individual, right? Eventually, it's, as you would say, it's a zariya. Of, of, of getting to some place, right? Um, so I think it was from the get-go, the, the, the idea was always to humanize them because they are, you know, they're lonely, they're lost, they're angry, they're unfortunate that at a particularly vulnerable moment in their lives, they had the wrong person put an arm around their shoulder. You know, that is the, that is the real tragedy. And uh, that was something that Hansal sir was very conscious of, was very intent on from the get-go. It's there in the script. I mean, you see the first scene, and we've often spoken about it, where you get that these 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 are boys, they're kids. You know, they could have very well been going to a, a college match or a football match or something like that. So I think it was al always there. And um, the opportunity to sort of dig into that and uh, go deeper and deeper into, you know, the person that the character I'm playing as opposed to the the, the external action of, of going and shooting up a cafe, holding people hostage. I think it was it was always the, the intent was always there from the get-go. But I would say that that was I inherited it in many ways as opposed to sort of you know uh, initiating it. Right, right. I wanted to ask you for you to sort of, you know, from a direction perspective, for about nearly 120 minutes you're confined in one space in the film. You know? held hostage with the people who are held hostage then even as a viewer to sustain that kind of tension for that long uh, was that particularly challenging for you? Hey, every film you take on a film one is because of the story that the story and the characters appeal to you the other is that how do you tell the story the telling of the story 
and that telling is where the craft comes in and you know my uh, theory on craft is that craft is always invisible right. that craft should not come in the way uh, of the film so how do i make my craft invisible and yet make the film engaging you know so uh, that was the challenge that was the, so when a storytelling challenge sort of presents you uh, itself to you uh, when you're about to start making a film, that's when you feel alive as a filmmaker. And I make films because they make they, they keep me alive as a storyteller. They keep me alive. They keep me going. You know, if I wasn't making films, if I wasn't on a set, I don't know if I would be here sitting in front of you today. Uh, it's the only reason I am. So, and every film, it's it's a kick. Uh, it's a kick that I get. You know, what do I do? How do I make this uh, absorbing? So uh, we sort of call, we ask for trouble often, you know, okay, now you have this chamber drama, you're stuck in a chamber and you have people outside on the streets, you have the, the, you know, the entire system outside and you have this place held hostage and now what do you do? So there was a script that we wrote with the map of the cafe in mind, the geography in mind and suddenly the set was completely different from the geography in the script. So all the readings we had done, all the workshops we had done, went out of the window. So suddenly you are presented with a challenge when you are there on set, and okay, now what do we do? So that was the fun, because then you are harnessing your instinct. You know, and everybody, all the actors, everybody suddenly is relying on instinct that okay, what happens after this? What will you do? Will he stand in near the window? Will he hide there? Will he ask for help? Will he cry? Will he keep quiet? So everything became a reaction to the moment. Yeah, so it was about, yeah, so ultimately, I think it's about being that moment and responding to that moment. It is not about that calculated uh, performance or that calculated moment. You know, it's there. It's all there in the script. There are lines, there's, there are, you know, sparkling gems in the script. But it is, you know, how you sort of, uh, thread them together. You thread them together using instinct. You know, so that the thread that binds the sparkling gems together is instinct. Is, uh, you know, discovering the story yourself. You know, to talk about the release of the film, you know, it's, uh, it's releasing in limited screens on Feb 3rd. What was the thought behind that? You know, because it's a conscious decision to like ensure that you scale up as we go along or how did you and uh, producer Anubhav Sinha arrive at that decision? I think, you know, uh, you know we, we know that we don't want to, uh, we, we are not in that illusion that this film is a weekend film. You know, this entire obsession with the weekend uh, and the box office, I mean the box office ultimately is the business of those who have invested in the film. You know, so the yardstick that uh, the box office becomes a yardstick for a film's uh, success or its quality uh, is something that uh, has always, uh, you know, uh, upset many filmmakers like me. The reason why, why that? And we've always sought producers who support the growth of a film organically. There's, there needs to be an organic growth. There has to be an audience that every film has an audience. We have to help the film find that audience. We have to allow it to breathe. It cannot just, every film cannot be this blockbuster on a Friday or a Saturday. It has to be given time to breathe. And I think that is the attempt over here. We are releasing it in 15 centers in approximately 100 or screens. Uh, and these are select, select theaters and premium uh, shows. And we want audiences to, uh, you know, discover the film slowly. You know, as more and more audiences go to the theatre, talk about it, have conversations, and the audience let the audience grow. So I mean, we are we are trying. We are trying to, uh, you know, I would say reinvent the game, but to try to try and find more, uh, find an audience for these films that we make. We want these films to, you know. Uh, for us, could have very easily been a film that would go directly to OTT. But the cinematic experience of Faraz, you know, every film, you know, while uh, 
there is a spectacle film, there is an RRR, there is a Pathan, is also a Faraz, which is also to be enjoyed on the big screen. You know, the tension, the immersive nature of the film is something, the sound, the entire, so there is a spectacle which is different from the spectacle that you would see in a Mission Impossible, but yet it is a spectacle. It is meant for the big screen and we want this film to be enjoyed by audiences, not enjoyed but at least you, I want the audiences to get immersed in the experience. Now this is a question for all three of you before we open it uh, up to the media. There is a narrative that's also emerged that, you know, why, you know, is an Indian filmmaker making a film about Bangladesh and the slippery slope there is, are we profiting off the trauma of other people without, you know, are, are we the right people to tell that story? Now, I personally feel that's not a very smart argument, but how do you react to accusations such as those? I don't even uh, give attention to that. I mean, a story is a story. A story that appeals to me has obviously has larger, uh, has a more universal uh, appeal than uh, you know that one local story. You know that that is the reason the film is made in Hindi so that I could take the story. I felt that this story had a global resonance. You know this whole argument of the good Muslim versus the bad Muslim which has been co-opted by those who want to incite hatred, who want to encourage bigotry. You know, I, we need to co-opt that. You know, people who believe that religion uh, cannot be misused like this need to also co-opt that conversation. And I can do it only through stories. And, you know, this, this story was a catalyst for that. You know, when I heard the story, when Zahar and I went to Bangladesh, we were moved by what we heard from the accounts that we heard from people. We were genuinely moved. And so human emotion does not have any borders. Stories are not bound by language. Stories are bound by hearts of those who see them. You know, so uh, Holocaust films, uh, have they been made in German? If, you know, if the Hollywood has made so many Holocaust films over the years. So I think uh, we have to move beyond these petty arguments and you know, how can you own uh, something that uh, affects all of humanity? No country owns it. I mean, we as a, as a race need to uh, empathize with the victims and completely denounce the actions of those who you know, do these things. So, uh, any thoughts on you know, while playing something that is inspired by a real person, how do you like tread that, that tight rope? Um, to be honest, it was uh, <clears throat> looking to, uh, looking for guidance from the, the filmmaker, from Hansal sir. It has been, I mean, Aditya and I have spoken about this. This film, the conversation started in 2019 with me. We went to Dhaka, Bangladesh together uh, to do research, to discover the story, to discover the character, to discover the version that we can present to hopefully touch everyone across border, across language. and. We struggled through that, through two lockdowns, through everything. But we had nothing better to do in a way and Hansa sir kept us busy. But it's a testimony to Hansa sir. He had every other offer coming at him. Uh, post scam release, it was every, every, I mean the phone wouldn't stop ringing. But Hansa sir also stood by this story and that same instinct, whatever it was, when he heard it the first time. So we were looking to that voice and I think it is completely, it is an honest thing for me to say that we surrendered to Ansal sir's approach and we were better for it. So it was not about us trying to impose our ideas as much as of it was how do we facilitate what we are trying to explore and even Ansal sir was trying to explore it. It's not like he knew the answers. It was like that we are doing it with us. So we do it. So I'll give you the answer in short. In one sentence. Then Buck stops at me. <laughs> well, what do you want to say? Just tell him. Yeah, he'll let him be. <laughs> but Ansar, it's a fair point. Post scam, you could have worked with any of the top stars who are lining up to, you know, get your time. But to take that risk of, you know, working with absolute rank newcomers, groom them, and you know, sort of facilitate their. I don't know. I've never, I've never seen. Confidence. I've never worked any other way. You know, Shahid could have been made with anybody at that time, a big star with that time. Of course, none of these big stars wanted to work with me, that's another thing. But, uh, uh, you know, 
there is Rajkumar Rao, who I met, and very instinctively I liked him. And you know, so very often, this is one thing I always tell people. Okay, people say, okay, you make these films, and you know, how do you measure the success of these films? I measure the success of these films by the success that the people who have participated in the film enjoy later in the industry. So very often, these a lot of these independent films serve the larger interest of the industry, the ecosystem. They feed the ecosystem with uh, newer talent, with better talent. And the more talent that you create, the, l the larger kind of stories that you start saying. You know, so every film is not meant to be an RRR, but it is meant to feed an RRR. It is meant, you know, the technician, like Pratham, who shot the film, will go on to shoot a bigger film. You know, so everybody, the industry, the entire ecosystem benefits from this kind of film. And I think we are that. I mean, we are all farmers. We are all farmers. You know, we are harvesting talent, and uh, uh, you know, the fruits uh, are for everyone. Yeah, to enjoy. Yeah, to reap. Okay, now we'll open up uh, to the members of the media. So, if any of you all have questions, please raise your hands and can you get the mics there, please. Yeah, Seema. Hi. Uh, so I want to ask, like, uh, you were just talking about chamber drama, how difficult it is, Akur had asked. I want to ask the two young actors also, Zahan and uh, Aditya, because it's only a very like, uh, restricted moment in one uh, where the cameras are very close on your face. So how challenging was that, you know, as, uh, so, as actors? So first of all, I also went into jumping in the deep end with Hansa sir because he's made films about characters across a long period of time. Scam, Shahid, Ali Ghar, the stories about someone's life. Do you get to spend momenta, you get to spend time with them in many, many scenarios. I said, wow, meditation on character filmmaker, it'll be amazing. Pada chala ek raat ki gaani hai. Usne character ke paas utne hi opportunity hoti hai. So, it was a complete reversal of even our expectation and I think Hansa sir's attempt also to say, no, we will explore, how do you create a character within such a constriction? How do we explore this one single location and just inhabit it, like he said? And that's what we did. We did lots of readings, we did everything. We absorbed the story as much as we could. And then by the time we were on floors, it was like he said, is that things were different, but we knew in the back of our minds what the story was. And we were very fortunate to shoot most of it chronologically. So we were able to get into it, live through it, and it was very, it was amazing because one night we were shooting, it was actually the anniversary of the attack, and we overlapped with that. And I found myself just getting lost in thought, thinking that how fortunate are we that we are in a position where we are safe, we are allowed to, through our art, through our craft, communicate such a story, but people have gone through this for real. This has happened to people, this has affected people, this is a tremendous privilege to be able to communicate that fact and it's not lost on any of us. So we know that it's a very sensitive thing but I just hope that that intensity that you feel, like Hansa sir said, when you sit in an audience and what Ankur said is that you feel like you are as much a participant in this event so as an audience member. Like I was telling Ankur something, very edgy. And that is the approach and that's again the challenge that Hansa sir said and, and we managed to all submit to that. And in 23 short days of shoot, we've given you a two-hour movie, you know, so I hope that, I mean, somehow we've managed. I think they would like yeah. that. Just to add to what Zahan is saying, you know, um, the, in terms of the process, uh, we shot chronologically, as he mentioned, but also, it was this one location. Uh, we were in a COVID bubble. It was all of us together, it was a community as you say, off the pitch and on the pitch. Uh, because in the space itself, also, you had all the actors present. All the actors that are present throughout uh, the, the film, in the, in the restaurant. Each one was present there, each one was willing to give 100%. So it was almost like you're stepping onto a live stage and you're living those moments, which made it all the more visceral. And then, you know, the, the idea of sort of uh, the fact that it coincided with the anniversary of the attack itself. All of those things, I think it just, it, it helped us sort of bring it to, to life uh, in, in, a, in a manner that I don't think we would have been able to otherwise, you know. So, 
There are, I suppose, advantages of telling a long drawn out story over a long period of time over different locations. But the advantages in terms of process of doing this chamber drama chronologically while being, while having everyone pre present at all times. You know, wherever you turn the camera, there is life. So it, it, that aspect just made it so much, I don't want to say easier, but, but it helped us sort of bring it to life, I guess, in a more effective manner. Just one more question for Hansel, sir. Like, uh, uh, reading about these two victims' mothers filing an appeal, challenging the release of the film. So what happened? Uh, See, the, uh, I've, only I've always maintained one thing, that we have put our faith in the judiciary. They filed an appeal. We, we have put our faith in the judiciary. We have done whatever is well within our rights, whatever is correct. We made the film with sensitivity. We have never made any rebuttal or anything uh, in the press. The people who are uh, talking about uh, right to privacy have gone to the press over and over again. They have held press conferences. We have not. And we would like to maintain the dignity of the victims and our film at all times. You know? So beyond that, I mean, I will not say anything. You know? There are there are there are grieving families, and we have uh, dealt with it with the maximum empathy possible. The empathy, all the empathy that is there in our heart. You know? The intention of the film is not to profit from anybody's misery. If I had to profit, uh, I would have after scam, uh, you know, jumped into something else or cast uh, his more illustrious cousins in the film. Zahan, <laughs> Zahan, my question to you. Aap bhoat khush naseeb hai ki aap kapoor family ko bilong karte hai. Aap ne apne dana ji ki koon si film mein dikhi hai? Aap ki favorite film koon si? Rapid fire. Um, I'm very bad with favorites. Mujhe favorite ek chunna baad mushkil hota hai. Um, I really think, I think the uh, Dada Ji ki jo career hai, jo, jo, jo thi, in terms of how he did commercial cinema, international cinema, phir produce kiya, uh, ki the apne films, film wala ke, that shows his sensitivity to, it is not one versus the other. Aisa nahi hai ki one picture is better than the other. Aisa nahi hai ki commercial cinema mein dumb hai kyunki audience jati hai. Aisa nahi hai ki art cinema mein ya art house ya jo bhi kao, parallel cinema ya alternative cinema, us mein haqeeqat hai, reality hoti hai, wo sari chizhe hoti hai, grit hai. So that is better. Nahi, wo baat hi nahi hai. If we can serve the story, if we can participate and have the opportunity to participate with good filmmakers and good storytellers, Every story will find its version, find its audience, hopefully. So, the idea is just to, to hopefully, if I can, is learn from that teaching and carry forward and participate with my best intention, with my best effort. Hans Hansel Ji? And you'll be watching many more films of I love watching films. So, I watch pictures. I watch all kinds of cinema and I will continue to watch because I love yes. it. His grandfather has been an inspiration for an yes. entire generation, particularly for the films that he produced. Yes. You know, at a time when there was so much of, you know, the, uh, when he himself was in all those big commercial blockbusters with Mr. Bachchan, he made films like Jammu, 36 Chorangi I mean, those films, uh, so that's what, see the, the this argument of the box office versus that you know the box office of the box office of 36 Chorangi Lane, no one knows. But the film is remembered. You know? So, ultimately what you do, why you watch Shashi Kapoor is left behind, uh, is a legacy that is way beyond uh, what the film did on a weekend. And why your films uh, leave behind much more than that. Stories resonate far beyond जो एक वो 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 गिनती मतलब इन्वेस्टर्स पे जो है ना जो ट्रेडिंग करते हैं उनपे छोड़ दीजिए इसी से जुड़ा हुआ मेरा सवाल है हंसल जी थे अगर आप अगर आप भावना शर्मा ना भारत जी 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 अगर आपके सिनेमा की बात करें 
अभी आपने थर्टी सिक्स चौरंग लीन और उनकी बात की तो आपका सिनेमा भी ऐसा ही है जो चौंकाता है हर बार और आपने भी कभी आप जिस मुकाम पे हैं वहाँ पर आप बहुत सीधी साधी अच्छी कमर्शियल फिल्म बना सकते हैं लेकिन आपकी जिद हमेशा रहती है आप एक नया सब्जेक्ट चैलेंजिंग सब्जेक्ट थॉट प्रोवोकिंग सब्जेक्ट को कमर्शियल बनाने की जिद आपने हमेशा की और कई बार आप सक्सेसफुल भी रहे लेकिन क्या बॉक्स ऑफिस के आंकड़े आपको कभी डराए हैं नहीं मुझे डर बॉक्स ऑफिस के आंकड़ों का जो ऑडियंस के लोग जो उसका हवा बना रहे हैं मुझे डर उससे है कि वो फिल्म के मेरिट्स को छोड़कर वो बॉक्स ऑफिस के आंकड़ों से उनको क्योंकि जो तुलना होती है ना बॉक्स ऑफिस के नंबर से फिल्म की क्वालिटी की उस तुलना से मुझे डर से ज़्यादा मुझे उस चीज़ से मुझे घृणा है उस चीज़ की और आ, मुझे देखिए मैं मैं भी कमर्शियल फिल्म से कराता हूँ कमर्शियल फिल्म क्या होती है मेरे लिए मेरे लिए कमर्शियल फिल्म वो होती है जिसमें फिल्म के इन्वेस्टर्स पैसे गवाते नहीं है द लॉन्ग रन तो मेरा मानना है कि मेरी फिल्म्स पैसे गवाती नहीं है हाँ वो मतलब आप उसमें मेरे बड़े पोस्टर्स नहीं देखेंगे कि 300 हंड्रेड करोर्स टू फिफ्टी करोर्स वो नहीं देखेंगे और मुझे कोई गिला नहीं है उसका लेकिन आप अगर दस साल बाद शाहिद को याद कर सकते हो अगर बीस साल बाद कोई कहे कि इन्होंने अलीगढ़ बनाई थी तो शायद मैंने अपना जो काम था हर आदमी फिल्म मेकर अलग कारण से बनता है मैं इसलिए बना था कि मुझे याद रखा जाए मेरे जाने के बाद ना सिर्फ वसीहत में मैं इन कहानियों को छोड़ सकता हूँ क्योंकि पैसे तो है नहीं उनके मेरे पास इस पिक्चर में जैसे कि आपने दिखाया ठाता में आदम के हमला होता है बचाया गया है तो एक धन विशेष को लेकर अक्सर सवाल उठते रहते हैं कि बच्चों को मिस गाइड कर दिया जाता है उनका ब्रेन वॉश कर दिया जाता है जिसकी वजह से वो इस रास्ते पर चल पड़ते हैं तो यहाँ आदित्य के कैरेक्टर में आपने कितनी उन चीज़ों को इन्वॉल्व किया है जो आने वाले बच्चों को नई पीढ़ी को रोक सकेगा और धर्म के नाम पर जो उन्हें मिस गाइड किया जाता है वो नहीं होगा देखिए कोशिश हमारी ये रहती है कि फिल्म के जरिए आप आ, मैं आपके अंदर एक सोच खड़ी कर सकता हूँ सोच पैदा कर सकता हूँ कि आप इस मुद्दे के बारे में सोचें कहानी आपके अंदर वो थॉट प्रोवोक करती है उसके बाद हमें एक के वो इंसानियत के बारे में आप सोचें कि इस फिल्म में जो मैं दिखाया है तो मैं हमेशा फिल्म को ना दूर से थोड़ी दूर से देखता हूँ मैं फिल्म को कहानी को जैसे है वैसे रखता हूँ मैंने ना इसमें आदित्य के कैरेक्टर को जज किया है ना ही मैंने जहाँ के कैरेक्टर को जज किया कि ये महान है और ये विलन है मेरे लिए एंटेगोनिस्ट प्रोटेगोनिस्ट वाला जो एक वो है अंतर वो नहीं है कोई वो इंसान दोनों है दोनों के कंपल्शन अलग है और क्या मुझे आदित्य के कैरेक्टर के कंपल्शन क्या मुझे वो समझ में आते हैं नहीं मुझे उसका गुस्सा मुझे उसका गुस्सा समझ में आता है उसकी नाराज़गी मुझे समझ में आती है लेकिन जिस जरिए से उस नाराज़गी को व्यक्त करता है वो मुझे गलत लगता है और वही हुआ है मतलब फिल्म में इनका एक आर्ग्यूमेंट होता है उसमें इसके कैरेक्टर ने इस चीज़ को डिनाई नहीं किया कि गलती गलत हो रहा है हमारे साथ दुनिया में गलत हो रहा है लेकिन गल, गलत जो होता है उसका मुकाबला हम क्या आ, लोगों को मार के हिंसा से करेंगे वो मतलब किस किस धर्म ने हमको ये सिखाया है कि नाइंसाफी का आ, मुकाबला हिंसा से करोगे मासूम जानू को लेकर आप आप नाइंसाफी का मुकाबला करोगे बहुत बहुत मूविंग था एक्सपीरियंस मतलब ढाका जाना ही अपने आप में मतलब उम्मीद करता हूँ कि दोबारा हम जाए क्योंकि वहाँ सबको मिलकर एक तो बहुत मूव हुए थे वहाँ के जो वो जो कैफे के पास हम गए थे कैफे को भी दूर से देखा था उसमें एंट्री रिस्ट्रिक्टेड थी तो हमने दूर से देखा था वहाँ कुछ सर्वाइवर्स को भी हम मिले थे लेकिन और एक चीज़ थी वहाँ ढाका जाकर ना हम जितने दिन थे खाना बहुत बढ़िया था और हमारी उम्मीद यह है कि हम कभी दोबारा जाएँ वहाँ और और खाना खाएँ क्योंकि ये भी फूड ही है 
ऐसे भी खाना बहुत अच्छा लगता है हम दोनों बहुत कोशिश कर रहे थे कि थोड़ा सा रिसर्च से थोड़ा टाइम निकाल के हम दोनों बाहर जाके मार्केट में कुछ खाना खाए हैं ढाका बहुत कमाल का शहर है हम गए थे जिनसे भी हम मिले थे सब बहुत अच्छे से मुलाकात हुई खाना बहुत अच्छा है लोग बहुत सुंदर है बहुत अच्छे लोग हैं मुझे ज़्यादा फ़र्क नहीं दिखता है ऑनेस्टली हम सब एक लोग ही हैं ऐसा भी बॉर्डर खींचा गया है और हम ये हैं आप वो हैं बट मुझे काफ़ी एक जैसा लगा तो बिल्कुल उम्मीद यही है कि हम वापस जाएं आ, मैं शुक्रिया अदा करना चाहूँगा कि उनकी कहानी आ, उन्होंने अपनी कहानी हमें दी आ, बनाने के लिए और और होपफुली मैं चाहता हूँ कि हर जगह जैसे हंसर चर, सर चाह रहे हैं हर हर देश में कोई इससे रिलेट कर पाए और और ये एक यूथ की आवाज़ है एक एक यूथ का एक संघर्ष है इसमें और एक वार्तालाप है उस पर एक चर्चा होता है इसमें तो होपफुली वी कैन रीच बियॉन्ड और ये एक अच्छी बात है कि हम एक दूसरे को देख सकते हैं हम एक दूसरे के आ, का दर्द को देख सकते हैं उनका सुख देख सकते हैं और बांट भी सकते हैं हम काफ़ी लोगों से मिले थे उन्होंने अलग अलग लोगों से हंसा सर के साथ से तो तो की फैमिली से भी मिले थे और मिले थे और दे वो वेरी स्वीट एंड काइंड एंड जेनरस सो वी कैन ओनली रिटर्न दैट फेवर होपफुली एंड बाय डूइंग ऑनेस्ट वर्क तो वो हमारी जिम्मेदारी है और आई होप हमने पूरी की हेलो हेलो दिस राजस्थान सांसद वाली है हंसा सर आई कैन टू आस्क यू व्हाट्स द मीनिंग ऑफ दिस वर्ड फॉर अस फॉर अस एक्चुअली इज द ओवरऑल थीम ऑफ द फिल्म इट इज नॉट ओनली अ कैरेक्टर्स गेम फराज बीन स्टैंडिंग टॉल समवन हु स्टैंड्स टॉल एंड आई थिंक ये जो अभी हम जिस समय में हम जी रहे हैं जो हम दुनिया में एक समय देख रहे जहाँ यू नो दस बिगट्री दस यू नॉट बिगट्री दस वी आर पोलराइज मोर देन एवर बिफोर वी आर डिवाइडेड वी आर वन वर्ल्ड येट वी आर सो डिवाइडेड वी आर यूनाइटेड बाई द इंटरनेट यू नो वी आर नो लॉन्गर कि इस कंट्री से यहाँ से वहाँ से हम सब वी आर यूनाइटेड बाई दिस स्मॉल डिवाइस बट Uh, we are so divided. We have put people in boxes. So I think it is time for people like us to stand tall, to be what this band is saying. That we are for us. This band. This band is the spirit of the film. That we are all for us, and that doesn't mean the character. It means that we are standing tall. That if there are ten nafrat bhalane wale, if there are ten people here. तो हजार लोग हैं जो फराज बन सकते हैं And you want to answer that? So, जैसे जहान ने कहा अपने दादा जी के बारे में, I think favorite चुनना तो बड़ा मुश्किल होता है और शशि कपूर जी ने भी और पिता जी ने भी बहुत सारी पिक्चरें की हैं, तो उनमें से एक चुनना तो बड़ा मुश्किल होता है। बहुत सारे बहुत सारी पिक्चरें हैं जो जैसे मुझे बहुत पसंद हैं, मुझे बहुत पसंद हैं। I would say in the recent past, Oi Lucky Lucky Ho, a kind of picture that, you know, which in a way he's playing a villain, but it's a manifestation of a of father for the character of Lucky. So I think in that sense, I think that picture is very interesting. And, you know, going back to Hansel Sir's point, which was talking about the box office, if you look at Oi Lucky, if you look at Oi Lucky, it had released at a time that, you know that there was a big, big uh, uh, attack in in Bombay at the same time. So, our box office ke aakadi dekhenge, to it was not much, but it still lives on in our memory. It's still a film that's very alive, that's uh, great to watch. It holds up, you know, even to this day. So, I think wo ek picture hogi jo. Just request people to keep the questions focused on the film, please. Uh, बहुत ही मायने रखता है वैसे ही 2023 की शुरुआत
शुरुआत हो गई है बॉलीवुड के लिए बजट के बजट से क्या उम्मीदें हैं आप बजट से हमने कभी उम्मीद नहीं की है बजट से मैं तीस साल से हूँ और मतलब ये सवाल हमें पूछा जाता है और मतलब ये सवाल किसी बेतु का सवाल है कि हम हमें ना कुछ मिलता है ना कुछ हम एक्सपेक्ट करते हैं मुझे मतलब कोई उम्मीद नहीं है I think Ankur also mentioned that you know yours was a very difficult uh, character to get into. Uh, you know, uh, of course there's this. Uh, you know, he is violent, of course, but there's also a, a bit of humanity that you know peeks through uh, every once in a while. How was the process of you getting into this character? Was it all in the writing, or uh, you know, did you have to do any special research? Did you have to like meditate? I don't know. Yeah. So I mean, uh, look, uh, I think. to get the opportunity to play this part first of all i am incredibly grateful to ansar sir for because uh, when i read the script my first instinct was how the hell am i going to do this you know and 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 to sort of i so i understood that responsibility uh, the moment i i i read the story and um, yes we did uh, put in a lot of work you know we prepared hard for it all of us we did uh, readings together you know ansar sir was always present uh, in those readings he was always happy to answer our questions always happy to sort always uh, sort of sure. <laughs> any emergency kisi ko please dikha do bhi banne ka oh emergency mein bata oh ishan bhai le lo le lo bol le lo yes faraz ki zarurat hai उंसेस With, with with the the religious aspects you know there are if you've seen the film there are uh, sort of a lot of uh, things that we we not just that we speak about but we also recite from the quran and uh, to sort of make sure that we're doing it in as authentic a manner as possible so that we're not sticking out i think those were responsibilities that all of us were very aware of so uh, yes there was a lot of preparation there was a lot of research I, as an actor myself, I do uh, enjoy, uh, you know, preparing for a part. I feel like the more I know, the more sort of sort of solid ground I'm standing on when we uh, go on set. So then, you know, then of course you forget all of that, and then you sort of completely surrender to uh, uh, the director. And so yeah, I mean, uh, to answer your question, uh, there was a lot of that, and um, I found it uh, incredibly enlightening. Not just for the part but also understanding humanity you know trying to understand what goes into the radicalism how it works as a machinery how it works on a personal level for these uh, young in many case boys uh, it was yeah i mean it was a journey of discovery and um, i am uh, you know terribly grateful that i could sort of uh, go through it with uh, the guidance of uh, ansal sir and you know to be able to Uh, and i must talk to uh, say that ikhlaq so who was an as associate of mine when i began my career he was already uh, you know a director and he um, my early days i learned a lot from him oh, yeah. so i uh, on this film i i called him i called ikhlaq bhai i told him that you know you need to train the boys and uh, so lot of the nuances you know i uh, one of the screenings I think Rumi Bai, Rumi Jafri, he even said that talafus was very good. So that talafus is a result of the training. They prepared. I mean, you know, to remember these lengthy suras was, uh, you know, lengthy passages, verses from the Quran Sharif. I think uh, hats off to their perseverance. It's not only them; all the boys, all of the, all the boys, even the girls, Resham, Palak. and the boys all of them had trained 
they trained together, they prayed together, they uh, recited verses together, and they remembered the verses and the meanings. <laughs> which you know, are creditable. Uh, so more than the workshop, one part of the workshop was their uh, entire indoctrination, uh, so to say, into the understanding Islam as a religion. And I think from that we also learned, you know, it, some of the messages that come out in the film are from what we understood yeah. from those classes. That, you know, no, the, the religion does not preach violence. Where did this violence come from? You know, what is, what the, this is a way of life that it is telling you. How it is showing you, it is telling you stories about the way you can lead your life. And you know, suddenly you have interpreted it to, uh, you know, uh, unleash violence. How? And, and just to add to what Sir is saying, you know, as as an act, as young actors, to have the guidance of Hansal Sir is just so comforting because you can explore, you can express yourself, and if you're not going in the right direction, he is on hand because he knows what he's doing. He's been doing it for a very long time. In the same way, to have somebody like Iqlaq by present, you know, whenever you have a question, if you feel like you're going, to, you know, if you feel like you may be doing it right or you're expressing yourself to the fullest, he's always at hand to sort of be like, you know, there's that pronunciation, there's this aspect, there's this meaning that you're maybe not able to uh, bring out as yet, you know, so you work towards that. And there were moments like, you know, we had questions about how do you pronounce this line exactly, this sentence in the in the surah, and he would have uh, his associates in, in, in terms of, you know, uh, the, in, in the, the neighborhood mosque, to who would sort of, you know, send us the, the voice note of the correct pronunciation. So we were very mindful of that and, uh, you know, we, we sort of uh, treated it with the care that hopefully uh, you know, one should. The last question, we'll be wrapping up now. Okay, thank you everyone for joining us. Thank you, Namaste. Thank you. 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 Thank you.